Hello everyone. Today we will talk about the all pairs shortest path problem, or APSP for short. The problem is simply this. Everyone needs to know their distance to everyone else. This is the ultimate routing primitive. You got some data to send to any destination, and you now know how far the destination is from you. And if you also have got this information for all of your neighbors, then you'll also immediately know which way to forward the data, so that you move it closer to the destination. It will be useful to contrast the all pair shortest path problem with a much easier task, single source shortest path problem, or SSSP for short. Here you've got a special starting node S, and it is enough that everyone knows their distance to S. This is enough if you are, for example, only routing data towards some sync node S. Now, how do we solve these problems in a distributed setting? In the familiar local model, we can trivially solve both of these problems in order of diameter many rounds. Just gather everything and then all nodes know the entire input graph and they can locally compute distances to all other nodes. But this is heavily abusing the assumption that in one round, we can send arbitrarily large messages. This week we are studying a new model, the congest model, which is exactly the same as the local model except for one restriction. Messages have to be small. So we can no longer send messages that contain, for example, a full description of the entire input graph. You can only send around small numbers, for example, unique identifiers or distances. So how to solve APSP in the congest model fast. As a warm-up, let's look at single source shortest paths first. This turns out to be really simple also with small messages. If you have specified one node as the source, you can simply flood information about distances from this node to everyone. The node itself knows it's at distance zero, and it just sends a small message to each neighbor informing that they are at distance 1. They inform their neighbors that they are at distance at most 2, and so on. When a node first receives message x from any neighbor, it knows it is at distance x. It can inform its other neighbors and stop. Basically, we create waves that propagate at constant speed in the graph outwards until they have reached all nodes. This works fine for any given starting point, and it takes only order of diameter many rounds until everyone knows their distances to the source. Now, what we could try to do is to do the same thing for every possible source in sequence. The first challenge would be figuring out how to coordinate this as we'd need to take turns in some distributed manner. But even worse, even if we could do this, it would take n times diameter many rounds if we initiate one wave, wait for it to reach everyone, and only then launch the second wave. Now, another idea would be to try to do all this in parallel. Just initiate a wave starting from each node simultaneously. Each node tells all its neighbors the distance to itself, plus its identifier and this information is forwarded. We'd have n waves in progress simultaneously. Well, if this was the local model, it would be just fine. But in the congest model, this won't work. There would be potentially huge congestion at some communication links. We might have almost n waves that would like to make progress over the same edge. And if we somehow take turns between different waves, we'd increase the running time by a factor of n, and we are back to something like n times diameter. But we can do better. There is a linear time algorithm for finding all pairs shortest paths in the congest model, and it's really simple. I'd like to emphasize we won't get diameter time this way, but at least the running time will be linear in n and not something like n times diameter. So what do we do? We first pick a leader S and construct a tree rooted at S. This is pretty easy to do fast in the congest model, 
as we can, for example, first find the node S with the smallest identifier and then initiate a wave from S to form the tree. There is a neat way to do both of these in one step. Everyone first thinks they are leaders and start to construct trees rooted at them. And then we just ignore messages coming from one root if you have already seen messages coming from a root with a smaller identifier. Basically, we initiate n waves, but other waves just die out as they get ignored and the one initiated by the node with the smallest identifier wins. There's no congestion on any link. In each round, each node only forwards the wave related to the smallest route it has seen so far. Good. We have now somehow picked a leader and formed a tree rooted at it. Now, how do we use this? The basic idea is simple. We create n waves, one starting at each node, but we do it so that many waves can be in progress simultaneously without any congestion. And to do this, we initiate a token and move it around in the tree. The token will traverse the tree in a depth first manner. Visit new children if any are left, otherwise come back towards the root. And we do this at half speed. Move token, wait for one round. Move token, wait for one round. This will be important. Now, please note that this token will traverse the entire tree in linear time. Roughly four times n steps are needed until we have visited all nodes. And what do we do with this token? The idea is really simple. When we visit a new node, we initiate a wave there. And that's it. We create n waves, one per node. And we managed to create all the waves in linear time. And each wave takes only diameter time to propagate through the network. So if there are no collisions between the wave fronts, everything will be nice and smooth and everyone will learn their distance to everyone else in linear time. And if you look at this animation, you'll see something curious. The wave fronts are always properly nested. A new wave will never cross a wave created earlier. There's no congestion. We have always got enough bandwidth on each edge to forward new distance information. And this was just a random network, not specifically constructed so that this would happen. The algorithm guarantees that two wavefronts that it creates will never collide. Can you see why this is always the case?